This is the T57 Heavy. It has 1,600 clip potential within six seconds, which means that you really don't want to be sitting out in the open in front of this thing. Combine that with the highest DPM of any auto reloader in the game, you have over 3,000 base DPM, meaning that it will then reload in sub 25 seconds after it's just dealt 1,600 damage to you. This tank, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated and overlooked vehicles in the game. And hopefully in this video, I'll explain why. Now, to compare this tank, it's not as simple as you might think because it sits halfway between what the 50B can do and what the Kran can do. Now, the Kran is your ultimate hold down ridgeline warrior, right? That is the best tank for the ridgeline out of any autoloader. Apart from maybe the Mino, but for heavies, that's the best one. The 50B, you can zip around the map, it's fast enough to maneuver and fast enough to get itself out of trouble as well, which is very, very important. And we'll come back to that in a second. The T57 Heavy, it doesn't really have armor, but it kind of does because sometimes you'll bounce some stuff and other times it just gets penned by everything. But we'll move on to the armor again a bit later on in the video. It doesn't have the mobility that even the Kran has. And the Kran is by no means fast, especially after the nerfs that it received. But the T-37 is not fast. It goes at 35 kilometers an hour. And that is without a turbo. So with a turbo, you'll be reaching 40. And that is its maximum. And so that means that, just like I was saying earlier with the 50B, that tank can get out of trouble, whereas this can't. If you get stuck in a situation where you're going to get overrun and you see that the flank is falling, it's very hard for you to move back to a position and then defend yourself from there. Whereas with the Kran, with the 50B, you can afford to do that. With this only going at 40, even though that it has perfectly fine terrain distances and it will reach 40, it's just not fast enough most of the time to actually get out of trouble. However, as a pure ambush tank, nothing beats this thing. In just six seconds, as I said in the intro, you can unload 1,600 damage. Whereas with the Kran, you'll be doing 1,320. And in seven and a half seconds with the 50B, you'll be doing again 1,600 damage. But that's an extra second and a half that you would need to keep someone out in the open for. Whereas this thing, it's already started reloading. <laughs> like, one and a half seconds is more than enough time to get your clip out and then reverse and if it's one on one facing a 50B, I know which one I'd rather be in. So we have the brawler, we have the support, and then we have the ambusher. And my God, is this thing a good ambusher. <laughs> so what do I recommend for equipment? Well, the first piece of equipment that you'll be choosing is hardening. I don't care what you say, this piece of equipment is non-negotiable. It will stop you getting tracked in the first shot and therefore allow you to get out of trouble. If you do accidentally go a little bit too far, for too long and then you get tracked you can just quickly repair it it's then going to take two extra shots to then track you and perma track you in that case and then you're in a lot of trouble but hardening will save your life more than ever especially in this tank because in this tank you want to be at, an, at a position where you can quickly just peek out deal your damage back off straight away again and if you don't have hardening a t57 out in the open without hardening is just asking to die. Because as soon as you get tracked and you get double tracked, dead. There's no questions about it. So hardening is 100% a must on this vehicle. The next piece of equipment, which I would recommend to everybody to use is turbo. Again, this thing only goes at 35 kilometers an hour. It is not super fast. You need to get that speed up as much as possible, especially getting that reverse speed up as well. Because that extra three kilometers an hour top speed that you receive from turbo for reverse is massive. And then lastly, yes, you probably guessed it, it's uh, a stab. Yep, who would have seen that one coming? This thing does not have very good soft stats for its gun handling, as you can see right here. It's not good. So keep a stab, keep that bloom down as much as possible, and you should be fine. Now, if you really do want to use directives on this thing, I would either recommend you use the stab directive or alternatively, I would use safe storage as a directive. Safe storage is a pretty decent option if you are trying to uh, free mark this tank, especially uh, being ammo racked in this vehicle. It does happen quite often, a lot more often than you might think. Um, so just keep that in mind. For the secondary loadout, we switch out the turbo for vents. 
and obviously put the stab back on right there. This is mainly only for Himmelsdorf mines, maps that are really, really small um, and that you don't really need the turbo for. Because let's be honest, if you're getting surrounded in mines, that's basically the entire map. So <laughs> yeah, there's not really too much that you can do um, in those types of scenarios. But the turbo for basically every other map, every other map in the game, I would use this other than maybe Himmelsdorf and Mines. Now the crew is kind of interesting because this isn't a heavy tank line from tier five, um, as you may well have seen. So in the tech tree, it actually goes from the T69, which it splits off after tier seven. And you have to go through the medium tanks to get to the heavy tank, which, I mean, I can kind of understand it, but it would have been a lot better if they just split off from say the heavy tank or something, and then maybe change the T69. Because the T-69 is probably the stinkiest tank in this entire line. This tank is not nice to play. It's very, very annoying. And not to mention, once you do get to the T-69, you then drop the radio operator. So the radio operator then becomes what it is on the T-57 Heavy, which is the commander. So not only do you have to grind your way through the T-69, which, let's be honest, it's a tier 8. It's going to take you a little bit of time. It's... It's at least not a tier 9 that is the worst tank in the line, which we kind of be grateful for, grateful for, because if it's a tier 9, that's a lot of XP to grind out on a bad tier 9. But the T-69 is not very nice, and it definitely isn't anything like the T-57 Heavy or even the T-54E1. It plays completely differently. But not only do you have to grind that out, you have to then go and obviously ditch your radio operator and move situational awareness to your commander. So it's kind of a lot to do on the T69. And that is where it starts to change for the rest of the line. Now, when it comes to fill mods on this vehicle, we go for the right, then left, then right. We go for the right hand side for the first one because it already has exceptional terrain resistances for both the hard and the medium terrain. Soft terrain really doesn't matter. There is only a very limited amount of situations where you'll get yourself into soft terrain. And let's be honest, Every single tank is going to be slow in soft terrain. The extra one or two kilometers hour difference in soft terrain does not make up for the loss of track health that you would gain when you choose the left hand side. Especially if you're choosing hardening, make sure you're always choosing the right hand side field mod or just nothing in general unless you have 300 track health. It's a whole thing. I made a full video on it. If I remember, I'll put it up in a card in the top right hand corner now that you can go and watch. On the right hand side, we've got focus on mobility, which will give us plus 3% to the reverse speed at the detriment of the reload time. Now, you could choose the other side and then you'll have even more DPM. However, it's only the reload time overall. It doesn't really matter, to be honest with you, this reload time. Whether or not you're getting 21.77 seconds or 23.12. That extra one second and a bit that you're going to be saving doesn't make up for the extra three kilometers an hour that you'll be losing. And just like I said earlier, this is an ambush tank. It is meant to be one of those tanks that you peek out, you do your damage, reverse back as fast as you can. So anything to aid that is better. And for number eight, the best field mod in existence, you get hit points and you get a reduced uh, aim circle after firing. Aim time doesn't matter on this vehicle. It doesn't matter in general for most times, um, I can maybe make a video on why that is, but for the most part, especially if you're using V-Stab, which you should be, that's not going to matter with the aim time. So the aim circle size of the firing means that it's going to remain as small as possible after you fire that shot, meaning that you can get those shots out really fast, all within six seconds, and pretty accurately. Now, just quickly speaking about the armor, as I did say I'll speak about it earlier, this has some very weird armor, as you can probably see. It has a lot of ricochet spots, and it's because this armor is 50 millimeters thick and quite well sloped, as you can tell, um, at, especially at the front here. So when you're using gun depression, you'll be able to bounce some stuff. Um, the cheeks underneath here are where you want to aim if you are shooting at this thing. So if we go to the visual model, you'll see that it kind of is like a 50-50 turret almost, or at least that's how I kind of imagine it. So you have the top half and you have the bottom half, which is this bit. And you always want to shoot the bottom half if you're aiming at a T57 Heavy. Never the top bit. Because even though that, yes, there are spots around here that you'll be able to pen, it's not 100% reliable. And especially if you're firing heat, 
this bottom half bit, piece of cake, just go straight through it. As you can see, the, f the higher up that you go and the more towards the gun that you go, the more random spots that you might hit that you might just bounce. So this is what I mean by it does kind of have armor, but it kind of doesn't. You can side scrape, sort of. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, no more than kind of this angle, um, because if they're firing heat, especially, they will be able to go through the back bit here, um, or even just underneath your turret as you uh, are kind of side scraping. So let's be honest, though, they're going to fire at your turret more than anything, because that is the weakest spot, even for just AP rounds, 180 millimeters thick. Tier 8s can go through that. Not that you would want to sit in front of that as a tier 8, but you could. <laughs> so it's time for some live gameplay. And I won't lie to you, I did already try and do this and uh, I got Manaheim line with nothing but TDs and that did not go well. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I would, I, I'm all for showing you my bad games, but that is, uh, that was literally one shot damage. So, yeah, that doesn't make it into the video. But here we are on safe haven. And as you can see, we are already loaded. We are going to be trying to spot people that are crossing early on here. And see if we can just get some quick shots out. Let's see. First guy is here. Of course, it's a... Uh... Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Wonderful clip right there. We'll try again in 15 seconds. We also know that the crown on E4 over that way. I'm a little bit worried about that, I won't lie, but um, it's not too bad, I don't think. What we can do is just move over this way and see if we can ambush the E4 uh, if he decides to peek out this side, which I mean he shouldn't. Uh, we don't have anyone behind us uh, on the casual TD spot that usually people sit in, but we do have this 140 with us. Uh, the E4 is also down there with the crown. And once again, we do have to be a little bit careful if there's anyone at the very back of the map. But let's go here, and now we begin farming this E4. And of course, we somehow bounce his lower plate, but we... Okay, yes, that makes up for it. I mean, RNG uh, takes away and then gives to you, you know? That's fine. But just like that, we've already done 1,900 damage. It would be a hell of a lot more if we actually penned all the shots. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter, I guess. One into the crown. Two into the crown. Just like that. We go for the reload because the reload is super, super fast on this vehicle. So we don't have to worry about that. And what we're going to try and do now is actually cross. Reason being, if we look at the what is spotted and what's not, there is only a 140 that hasn't been yet detected. So that means that we should be able to push into here, and there may be a Leo at the end here. There's not, that's fine. But we can push into this and hopefully get some damage done. We can even clip out this 5A right here. Actually, let's do the 705A right here. We're going to put one more in. I want to try and ammo rack him if I can. Eh, not two ammo racks in the game. Not yet. We did hit his fuel tanks though. Usually around about that sort of area, you can ammo rack him and also send him fire. But we're just now reloading again. And as you can see, you may notice another bad thing about this tank. And if you watch my video on the top uh, or best tanks to grind, you'll know that this tank doesn't get a lot of ammo. And that is a problem. I'm surprised that didn't pen. We're going to load a uh, heat because we're only loading two shells otherwise of AP. Yeah, you run out of ammo. Like, super, super fast in this vehicle because of how fast it shoots. And you only get, what, a 36 shells, I believe? Um, something like that. So, it's... Yeah, it you do run out. It's just a fact and something that you have to be aware of. Um, taking blind shots in this vehicle is risky. To, for lack of a better word. Um, you, you will just randomly realize that you run out halfway through the game. Um, I think I worked it out also in the video. It's like four minutes or something of just constant firing once you fire the first shell. Um, if you were constantly firing on every single reload uh, with maxed out DPM, that's what you would get, which is insane. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, some of the games don't even last that long. So, you know, you're okay in that respect, but... And the games that do... Also, I love all these TD... Not TDs. These uh, people that just sit in there staring. <laughs> We're just staring at the corner. The 705A fires, and maybe I'll uh, try and peek around the corner, but... I don't know if he fired or not. He didn't. Ah, oh, and I didn't even get the shot off. Yeah. I was hoping I could get the shot off on the 5A. Rip. Man, there's... That's a 5A there and a 705A there. It's too confusing for my brain. Yeah, we've done 5.2 in basically no time at all. I mean, we had to push eventually anyway because of that guy. But I don't think there's any real winning this game, unfortunately. So 5.2k damage, nearly 5.3. And we did that all in four minutes. I mean, we've basically done an entire... I mean, we got, what, one shot? <laughs> out of the clip that we fired heat with. Um, so... In about two minutes, we had done 4,000 damage. Yeah, this thing uh, does a lot. Does a lot of damage. It's, um, mm. <laughs> And just to show you, I will show you this other game. Like, look at the amount of tank destroyers that are in this game. There's just nothing you can do on a map that is so corridor-centered that as soon as you win a flank, you then just cannot push it. Especially with this many tank destroyers. So, yeah, this... On a map like this, Manaheim Line... This isn't the tank. There's nowhere that's really good for you to go. Um, like you can go north on Mannerheim line in a T57 Heavy, but you then just have to wait until they push down to you, or you push up to them, but then you could die just doing, you know, going close to them. So it's really annoying on maps like this because you have no turret armor. You can't really go south either because, again, you don't have turret armor. So not much you can do. And I mean, that's where the T57 doesn't do so well. It's on those maps where it's just is so inflexible that it kind of doesn't have any armor and you need a spot where you can sit behind somewhere, reload your clip, and then go out and do it again. That's what you need. You need maps where you can hide, reload, do it again, rinse and repeat, and just keep doing that. Maybe move around a little bit, obviously. Uh, don't just sit in the same spot over and over again. Stuff like that, like you saw on Safe Haven, where there's always an opportunity for me to hide behind something. Okay, so we are now on Erlenberg, which again, is a very decent map. Um, there is opportunity for you to hide and then keep peeking the enemy every now and again. Um, for this map, I wouldn't recommend you choose vents. Always turbo because you need to get to the location. Um, especially if you are slow, um, then you run the risk of them taking this location right here, which looks like the 260 and even the 277 are doing. Um, and then once they're there, if you're way too slow, you might not even make it to this corner before getting farmed. So, there's definitely risk involved um, in choosing the uh, the wrong equipment setup. But what we're going to do here is just wait. Hopefully we don't get spotted by that 121B. But if someone tries to cross this now, we should be able to track him and do plenty of damage. That is two vk 72 ks which are... They're just not fun to play against. Um, that will uh, do a lot of damage to me. Mm, also, that 277 peeking over there could be a problem. Kampfpanzer is peeking that corner, which I can pen... Not ultra-reliably, but reliably enough. Well, the uh, Kampfpanzer just got blown up. Also, our team has pushed in, so we have a much nicer situation. Went into him, and I'm going to load heat. I'm going to load heat because we're going to need it. Plenty of armored tanks around here, which are going to cause me a hell of a lot of issues uh, if I don't use heat. VKKs are some of the worst tanks to play against. Not because they're well armored, but because they'll do so much damage and have such high pen. It's like a more flexible Yagpan Z100. <laughs> it's the best way that I can put that tank. Also, FE 4005 um, did get a shot at someone. I don't know where exactly, but if he's on that corner, that's a very big issue as well. I know the Mino's there. I know. Sorry, I'm going to try and let you pass. Mino is pushing out, which is a mistake. He gets punished for it, though. 
Don't you love a tank that has loads of weak spots? Yeah, I do. It's great, isn't it? It's not like I was firing heat rounds or anything, you know? It's not like they have 340 heat. <laughs> and I can't even pen his weak spot. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. Completely balanced tank. I'm so glad it's top of the tree. And I hit his gun. <sighs> I mean, I know I'm just going to have to take the hit at that point to try and get that final shot off. So I just accepted it. Honestly, such... Such a disgusting and lazy design tank. Just like that, though, we do have the reload for the I-7. I am worried. I'm very worried, actually, about all of these over here. Like, that is a big, big issue that I am very worried about. I'll try and peek just out here. I'll raise my gun to see whether or not I can spot anything. We're going to get spotted by the I-7 if we go any, any closer. Um, I think he's just outside of our... our uh, yeah, he's, just, he's 61 meters, so if he come, he would have to come around about to here to be able to spot me, uh, to proxy spot me. What I want to do at this point, just keep an eye on this, Mino, right? Because we know that the I-7 was enjoying ramming into this to try and get a better angle. And if we see that move, that we know that he's still doing it. But if we don't, then maybe he's either just sat there or he's got off or we might even be trying to push. So we just need to be careful of that. I'm going to try and get shots on this VK if I can. Problem is, this IS-7 is still here. Man. 260 is still here as well, right? Maybe we can set the 260 on fire. Right. And to pull back. Lovely. The visa gets the kill on him. I can save this guy and shield him as much as I can. I will now try and get the kill on this. Wonderful. We should now pull all the way back here. Uh, right now, we need to be very, very careful of the FV. The FV is now our biggest threat. We might be able to get a shot on this VK if we can. That would be amazing, actually. If we can get him out of the game. Of course it goes low. So why wouldn't it? Come on! The shots that I need to hit, just not hitting. The other FV is all the way over the other side. There we go. Right, that's a good shot to hit, though. T100 is out there somewhere. Which is actually quite a big issue for us. Our team, not so much. We're also now down to uh, just AP. We've expended all of our heat rounds. So that is something we need to watch out for. FV just killed the AMX. I try and go around here. If we get spotted, we know the T100 is up there. We don't get spotted. Which is interesting. Oh, this is a problem. I don't really know how we're going to play this. Okay, FV is over that way. Where's the Centurion, though? T100 dies as well. That's good. Um, we're going to peek forwards like this and just see if we can spot the Centurion if he fires at us. Like, we're kind of just baiting it at this stage. I'll tell you what, though. Even better idea. We should cross the bridge. Cross the bridge while we know the FE is elsewhere. We get spotted, which means the Centurion... Which means the Centurion is either around here or he's around, like, over there. And I would bet that he's in the city, rather than over the other side. But we're going to cross here, and just see if we get shot at. We don't. 
We know the FV is still over here though, and with an AP round he can kill me. So we're just going to peek this corner and we'll just see what we can find. Don't see anything. Let's now push forwards a little bit more. Stirin AX is still around there. That turret's doing very weird things. FV. <laughs> I don't know where the FV is. Oh. Super Conqueror would have spotted him by proxy if he was really close, which means that the FV is, is either around here or he's all the way out over there. And I wouldn't lie to you, I'm kind of hoping for the latter. Okay, he's not the latter. Uh, how did that... Where did that even go? What? I don't know where my shell just went. That was AP. That shouldn't have disappeared. Okay, very cool. I was trying to I was trying to shoot his track before he came around the corner, but sure. I really don't know where that shell went though. I mean, we played it pretty well up until then, because there wasn't really too much we could do uh, differently uh, up until then. I know I was trying to get the track on the FV, um, and then that way we would have killed him. Uh, would have tracked him out in the open, and then IS seven FV would have killed him. Uh, up from the the, uh, the windmill or wind turbine thing. So, eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. That's a T-57 Heavy. As you saw, it's got its strengths. It's got its weaknesses. It's definitely not some idiot-proof tank. You need to know what you're doing. And I still think, though, it is insanely overlooked how good this vehicle is. Because in the right scenario, and you can put yourself in the right scenario, pretty much most games, you'll dish out the damage and then just retreat. And it's super effective for that. But when you're not in that scenario and you have to rely on turret armor, this is definitely not it. So let me know your thoughts down below what you think of the T57 Heavy. Hopefully I've helped you out with any little tips and tricks along the way. And hopefully you've got a better idea of what it's good at and what it's not so good at. So even if you don't have any plans on actually, you know, playing this vehicle, you now know a little bit more about the tank to deal with it when you face it. Thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you on the next video.